Hey everybody, it's Jane. Welcome to an original podcast, Healthy Minds for Healthy Lives. Let's start off with a story of a young girl in high school in her senior year. She always put on a strong front when she was at school, work, and dance. But behind that front, her walls were falling down hard. There were girls at school that would yell extremely rude things, covering it with a cough. And she tried so hard for so long to ignore it and be strong, so to say. But everyone has a breaking point, and hers was the week before graduation. She tried to OD with a bunch of random pills in her room one night. After not answering her friend's many attempts to reach her, she came over to her house and found her on the floor in her bathroom and made her throw up. The girl on the bathroom floor made her promise her friend that she wouldn't tell anybody about what happened. Her friend was very smart and told the school the next day. And they called her down to the office and her dad was in the dean's office crying. And she was sent to the hospital to get her stomach pumped. That girl was me. I noticed and I still notice that when I am not consistent on my medications, I can't do anything. I can't get out of bed, my whole body aches without even doing anything that would have caused those aches. I can't think rationally and I sleep constantly. And when I say constantly, I mean for like days I don't get out of bed, I just sleep. I hate this, but I feel this way when I'm constant, consistent, and when I'm not consistent on my medications. I tell this to myself all the time, that I hate the fact that my brain doesn't work like a normal person's brain, and it's so frustrating, and I have to take medications just to be able to function like a regular person. And some days, even when I take my meds, I still can't do these normal activities. It is so hard to be different and being diagnosed with an illness that people can't see or feel tangibly. But in recent years, more people have been accepting to the fact that mental health is real and important. College students ages 18 to 25 have more accepting views on mental health compared to older aged adults. But with the stigma that comes with having mental health disorder, it hasn't changed in the ways that it needs to. Being clinically diagnosed with depression, bipolar, and anxiety, any time that I hear someone say, or would hear someone say, oh, so-and-so has depression, my thoughts about that person would change. And that was before I got diagnosed. Um, My thoughts around them became negative and almost afraid of them. I know, oh, I know. That was the worst thing to do. That is the worst thing to do. But I was also scared of the idea of having and suffering from depression because I thought that if I had depression, I would just be suicidal all the time and sad all the time and cry all the time. Nobody wants to do those things. I also didn't want people to think of me the way that I thought of those who I knew had depression. I didn't want to be judged or bullied. The people that don't suffer from a mental illness don't understand the ways that people that do have a mental illness react to situations, think, or feel, and it's so hard. Studies have shown that about one-third of college students are diagnosed with a mental health disorder. That is a lot of college students. 80% of college students struggle with anxiety on a daily basis. 75% of college students with a mental health disorder don't seek help. One in every 10 college students have a suicide plan. With the issues of not being able to afford mental health care, medications, or even being able to find and schedule an appointment with a psychiatrist, more and more people are left to, quote unquote, kind of fix themselves. Mental health is extremely important and should not be taken lightly at all. If you or a loved one is experiencing any signs of mental health, disorders, please talk to them. Let them know that you are there for him, for them, and they, um, and it, that you will help them on their journey. You might not be able to understand what they are going through, but listening and caring helps immensely. Help them find a provider and figure out a financial plan so that they deserve and get the help that they need.